Hey everybody, this is Konak here, and it's time to return to the world of Alpha Clash, the superhero card game I advertised a while ago. I filmed myself opening a box, if people are still interested, but I kind of realized later that I had actually filmed the wrong one, as box number two contained both the Alpha Rare and its legendary form. Anyways, Alpha Clash came back to me to help them hype their second set that releases this November. The world is in jeopardy. The sinister Alpha Aster's plan to sow chaos on Earth has so far had little opposition. By using the power of the Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, Aster has created the Alpha Phenomenon, which not only caused humans to start developing superhuman powers, but also be overcome with the desire to fight and conquer. His only real opposition, a mysterious woman named Claire, has the ability to break these Alphas free of this aggressive streak, but she had not made much progress by the time Aster made his next move. Because it turns out, Aster wasn't just trying to sow chaos on Earth to try and conquer it, he was building a stage. Portals have appeared across the globe, and violent champions from across the universe have arrived to use Earth as their battlefield. And with so many human alphas still under Alpha Aster's thrall, what hope does mankind have when these harbingers come to clash on this chaotic new playground? Get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? So the second set actually offers a lot. We see new champions, several with different starting stats and abilities. We've seen double attribute cards, but the biggest twist is the new portal mechanic. Certain cards can open this portal and certain others will check to see if the portal is open or closed, but either player can pay two resources at any time to toggle the state the portal is in, changing how cards might work. I worry this might affect the tempo of non-portal card decks, but the fact that any deck can interact does help it a bit. There's also an emphasis on matching more American comic book art style with stronger line work emphasized over the soft shading of set 1. And I have been handed a pair of cards to show off today, both of which I believe come from the new Red vs. Blue 2 player clash kit. I've actually been building a mean streak blue deck to take advantage of his draw power, so this has me excited. First on our list, we have the Clash Ground Siberia. It depicts Machina, a fairly straightforward super strength brute, busy contemplating how he can outdo the Tunguska event. This Clash Ground takes advantage of the Flash's weakness, the harsh cold denying the super speed ability, this game's version of First Strike. It also decreases the equip cost of red and black weapons by one each. There actually weren't any red weapons in the first set from what I can recall, so I assume Machina is going to get some fancy rocks or something? Black had some interesting effects involved with equipping weapons, so this might be a card to watch. And for our other card, we have the blue card Shifting Priorities. Here we get some lovely dynamic artwork featuring Mean Streak and a barrel shot kicking Machina in the face, but his gaze is elsewhere, indicating a crisis he's desperate to get to. For two resources, you remove two counters from a Clash card or Relic card you control to give all of your Clash cards plus one plus one until the end of the turn. On the surface, this one doesn't seem like a winner. The counters are obviously meant to be either the Streak counters used by Mean Streak or the Collection counters used by Haven Blue. Thing is, those counters are precious, so I don't see why someone would throw them away for such a mild effect. But this strikes me as a card to keep an eye on thanks to how open-ended its wording is. It lets you target any kind of counter with your cards, so if we ever get a contender or archetype or some other kind of gimmick that flings counters that impose negative effects on cards, this could be an easy choice to side in to get rid of them. All in all, I do like the fact that they are being experimental in their very first expansion. We'll have to see if the portal mechanic makes or breaks the game, but it is nice to see that the game is already trying new things. It's one of the things I encourage games to do to specifically avoid the two-year curse. Thanks again to Legend Story Studios for this opportunity, and until next time, this is Kodok signing off.